morning. Here we are, Saturday. November 16th, 24. I'm Laura Phyllis, my video diary. Time to drink. Time to drink from Skulls. Mm. 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 So yesterday, I went into the gallery. Ugh. Mess. Look at me. I'm a mess. Yesterday, I went into work. It was open. Yeah. Yeah. I got the front room, the front gallery, all rearranged, broke down my palette, put away my paints, and roped off the wet painting. Yep. <laughs> I broke down the two tables that were holding up the palette and put those away. So, they're not, you know, out and about on the floor, junking things up, you know? And, um, yeah, the front room looks real nice. The painting looks real nice. You know, I have a chair arranged in there so you can come in and you can sit down and you can look at the painting. If you so choose. I went up there and I sat and looked at the painting for a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And then I did some, tried to do some writing. I had cramps real bad and just had, didn't have a real long attention span. Yeah. So, oh my God, there's this on my floor in there. So the floor, they, they put in a new floor, right, before I moved in. And the floor that was in there before was a linoleum floor. And I told them, I told them, I said, you know, you can leave the linoleum floor, just clean it. You know, linoleum is kind of cool. I said, you, you can just leave the linoleum floor. But they didn't. They took it out. And I knew it was going to be a pain in the ass because linoleum, especially old linoleum, is a pain in the ass to take out. So it took them longer than you were expecting. They thought it was just going to come up in tiles, but no, it didn't. And I knew it wasn't going to. Anyway, they put down this rubberized vinyl tile that looks like wood. It's not wood. It's rubberized vinyl. And it's glued. And <clears throat> they put down the rubberized vinyl because the floor underneath is not a subfloor. It's concrete. And it's not entirely flush. Right? So, like, it was, they're going to either have to put down subflooring, flatten it out, and then put flooring on top of that, or put on something flexible, right? You couldn't just put, put just anything down on it. Anyway, too much adhesive, and the adhesive it continues to ooze up. Continues to ooze up between the slats. And so I have, like, these big old goobers all over the floor and they collect dirt because they're adhesive and it's sticky and I've tried wiping it off well I used mineral spirits I've used goof off I've used goo gone and I've tried using graffiti remover because that graffiti remover man it just bubbles up the paint when you go <laughs> I'm like well maybe that'll do it I don't know what the hell this adhesive is I don't know how to get rid of it but it looks like shit on the floor like it literally looks like there's shit smeared on the floor and I can't get it off and and they, they won't respond to me to tell like I've, I've reached out to the property management about it a couple times and they, have, they haven't responded about it I'm like what am I supposed to fucking do about this It's not the entire floor. There's just a few places where there was just too much adhesive. And I know what the issue is. Like, it's places where the floor was low, right? And so when he scraped when he scraped the adhesive over, there, were, there was too much adhesive, right? But he used the adhesive like a filler, except that it's not a filler. And, you know, with pressure of walking over it, be, you know, being on it, it's, you know, it looks like hell. It looks like hell. I don't know what to do. And I don't know what to use. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, mineral spirits don't take it up. I don't know what the hell's going to take it up, right? Like, what am I supposed to use? Kerosene? I think I have some kerosene. I think I do. I don't know. I think I do. I think I have, I think I have a jar of kerosene downstairs. I think I do.
don't know. So, there's that. And I worked a little bit on the, uh, on the magazine, but, oh. Oh. Like I guess I had cramps and I wasn't, like, in the mood to focus on writing. I have cramps right now. Ugh. Yuck. Yeah, so then I, I took the... I took the seam, pulled the seams out of the, the sleeves of that jacket so I could do the, do the repair, fix what I did, what didn't go in right. And, um, also I decided to add some embellishment. So I opened up those sleeves and I didn't do any actual sewing because I'm like, Larissa, you're being kind of butterfingery. Don't be sewing today. You can take these stitches out and place your pieces, do your piecing and everything. So that's what I did. So maybe I'll work on that today. I don't know. Work on that. I need to make a groom. I've been saying this for like three weeks now that I need to take a, need to make a grooming appointment for Brody. And he is just getting dirtier and dirtier. He is. Dirty, dirty dog. He was being so snuggly. He was being so snuggly. It was so funny last night. Sassy came up and got on my lap. Poor, poor little old lady, kitty, kitty, kitty Sassy. Oh, poor little old lady, kitty Sassy. I, I, I should take her. I should take her to work with me. I should, so she can sit with me. Cause, poor kitty, she spends all day laying on her heating pad. It's like all she does. And she comes down to snuggle with her mommy while we're watching some TV. And he and he gets all bent out of shape. Well, she finally got down off my lap. And then he had to get up in my lap. But then he was being all cute and snuggly. And I'm like, oh my gosh. Whatever. Whatever. I think I'm going to stick to working on garments um, and the magazine for a little while until Lent, um, and then, oh, consider what my project, what my, what my work is going to be, what my series is going to be this year for Lent. Um, Lent starts, is early again this year. It was early last year. It's early again this year. So it's not that far off. Um, but I'm going to take a little break from, from, uh, the, Super heavy work. That painting's heavy. Yeah. And it's not that my garments aren't heavy. It's just that they're, you know, working on utilitarian objects as opposed to um, just purely functional objects. Um, or, or func you know, like, a painting has a function, but it's not utilitarian, right? Um working on things that have utility. It, it's a, it's a, it's a different, it's a different thing. It's a different process. It's a different mindset. And I have this article that I need to write and, um, I, I'm writing some intellectual art, intellectual, intellectual art stuff right now. I don't know. I'm sounding like, a, I'm sounding like a dumbass. I don't know what the hell is the matter with me. Blech. Having trouble getting words out of my mouth. We were watching the monsters last night. Oh, the monsters. I used to love that show when I was a kid. I felt like they were my family. I did. I felt like I was in, I felt like my family were the monsters. I felt like we were. Yeah. I did. <laughs> I felt like we were the monsters. Hmm. Anyway. Yeah, I want to finish. I want. I want to do these jackets. I want to finish these jackets. Um, these leather with these leather sleeves. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my foots. My little foots hurt. Oh, I have little foots. I do. Oh my god. 
you know, watching all this stuff online, you know, everybody's like, all, all of this hubbub upset about the election. And it's just like, <laughs> we need to move forward. <laughs> And, you know, I didn't vote for either side. As a third party, as a third party American, the, the, this, the temper tantrum that happens after every election for the losing side is really, really non-productive. It really is. I bit the inside of my mouth in, in my sleep or something. I don't know. Like up here in my cheek. It's like I chomped on my cheek. It hurts. What the hell? Oh, I must have had some crazy ass dream chewing on the inside of my face. I mean, I'm a fat girl, but I am. I'm not that hungry. I made soup last night. It was good. Ugh. No, but the, the temper tantrum that happens, you know, people talk about, oh, people are cutting off family and friends. It's like, geez, I, this doesn't make me feel bad for anybody. You know, I have lived in isolation from my family for and from having any friends for years, decades, over a decade now. Right. The whole during the pandemic, I felt the same. I felt the same way because like I'd been living isolated for years already. Right. Being being excluded from from everybody's life, from, ev you know, being pushed away, being told, no, you're not allowed to participate. No, we're going to just you know, you're not allowed to have anything you want. You have to be by yourself. Like it's like, fuck you. I, you know, and, and that's how I feel about all these people pouting about this goddamn election. Fuck you. World's tiniest little violin. I'm sick and tired of it already. Jeez. You know, like... <sighs> both sides screw, ev screw everybody over. Or at least screw me over. So, you know, I don't feel bad for anybody. I don't. Ugh. You know, the past like 15 years, I, you know, I used to be, I used to, uh, when we lived in Santa Rosa, you know, I was part of all I, I left the Democratic Party. I left the Democratic Party because of what they did to me. They did they, they destroyed my career and then picked apart all the pieces and gave it to their friends to make money off of. Right? That's no better that's no better than what the Republicans want to do to my uterus. It's just another part of me. So I just don't, I don't feel bad, you know, and all these people are talking about, oh, now we're going to deport all these people and all these poor people and they have friends and family. You know, I spent all that time and effort, spent all that time and effort doing the health advocacy that I did and doing that, do, doing all that volunteer work that I did for, you know, with the people and the places and the things that I did and got nothing but bullshit from everyone, including the Democrats, right? None of them helped out. But now it's like, oh, now this is what we got to do. I'm just like, I, I don't understand people. I don't understand people, you know?
nobody wants to do anything about things when they when something can be done, right? They they want to wait until things are so bad, right? Because people like to bitch and moan, but people don't like to be proactive. So like all of this stuff was preventable, but nobody wanted to do the things you had to do to prevent them, right? And we're, when we lived at the cotton mill, it's like now now there's all these all these lefties, you know, talking about you know food politics and blah, 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 blah. And I'm just like, you know what? When we were, when we were at the cotton mill, it was lefties who were like, oh no, we, we, you know, we need these gene genetically engineered things and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, oh my God. Cause science. I'm like, yeah, okay. Oh. I don't know. We're all screwed, but I've been saying that for years. Oh. At least, you know, at least, at least I'm, you know, an, uh, approaching the menopause, going through the menopause here, whatever, you know, soon I'll be done. I won't have to worry about getting pregnant anymore. So. I guess. Hmm. And at least I don't have any children, so I don't have to worry about daughters, right? Getting screwed over. By fucking woman hating Republicans. Or self loathing lefties. Jeez. Oh. Yeah, no, it's all just it's all just crazy. And I don't see any of the social discourse of oh, let's be positive. Everybody be positive. And then it's just like then there's all this bullshit. It's like, it's like I, I don't even know, what does that mean? You say, you know, be positive about stuff or. It's like, as long as, as long as you think exactly like, like, like the rest of the group thinks, then you're okay. Mm. Mm. Do not have any divergent opinion. Divergent opinion is frowned upon. Pay no attention to what the actual facts and reality are. Huh. Oh. Well, here comes shitty holiday that Larissa can't stand. I hate Thanksgiving. I really do. I have for personal reasons. For very personal reasons. It has very little to do with the holiday itself. I mean... <laughs> I understand, like, lots of people get all up in arms. Oh, my God. Like, oh, for crying out loud. <laughs> so, was, you know, nobody likes any of the holidays. So I try to offer a holiday. Slow art day, you know. Why can't you get behind slow art day? Let's have a holiday people can agree upon. So I think slow art day is pretty good. Thanks, Phil Terry. Phil Terry, kudos to you, Phil Terry. <laughs> Phil Terry, if I ever get to meet you, I'll give you a hug. Thank you. I love slow art day. It's a wonderful holiday. Oh my god! But no, everybody still wants to hold on to these other ones, but they don't want to. They don't want to celebrate this new holiday. This new holiday that that the, nobody has baggage with, and you can't really argue about. Slow Art Day is a great holiday. It happens in April. <laughs> you go look at art with other people. It's the way you celebrate it. You're celebrating art and creativity and the human spirit. Oh my god! That doesn't exclude anyone, now, does it? That is a celebration of humanity. Oh my gosh, Phil Terry, I love it. <laughs> I have no idea if I agree with you on anything else in in, in 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 life. I have no idea. And I don't care. I love Slow Art Day. It's fantastic. Celebrate Slow Art Day. <laughs> find yourself. It's find yourself a holiday that nobody can fight over. No, you go look at some art. Slowly and quietly for an hour. Can you be slow and quiet for an hour? Can you? Can you do it? Can you do it? Can you do it? I don't know if you can. I don't know if you can. You got to scroll, 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 scroll. Can you stop your scrolling for just a minute? For an hour? 
can you? Can you sit in the presence of some art with some other people quietly for an hour? Can you do it? And look at that art. Consider that art. Think about that art. Feel that art. For an hour. And then talk about it. <gasps> you asked me to talk about art? What? <laughs> That's how you celebrate slow art time. And maybe you share a meal while you do that talking. <gasps> what? A meal on a holiday? What? That's unheard of. It doesn't have to be a turkey. You could eat a bag of candy. <gasps> you could eat a bag of candy. You could. And then you give each other paint brushes as presents later. <gasps> oh my gosh. <laughs> I love slow art day. I do. Thank you, Phil Terry. Thank you. I love it. I think everybody should celebrate slow art day. Thanksgiving. Ugh. <laughs>